Today we discuss base models. I've gone over the different styles of Taisho Koto before as well as some of the differences with acoustic classifiers. In this respect, bases for the most part are consistent. There aren't huge discrepancies between bases and their acoustic range, unlike with altos or tenors. The main differences you'll notice are with tone, length, and number of keys. There are plenty of differences in that regard. As we go through the Taisho Kodos, keep the number of keys in mind for whatever your application may be. It may sound great, but does it have enough range for your needs? Starting things off, we have a rather rare Lyrish bass Taisho Koto. This one has 24 keys and the open string note is 5. The Lyrish is 90 by 14.5 by 8.5 centimeters and weighs a whopping 7.3 pounds. This one is a chunky beast, which is another thing to keep in mind since I have seen people add a neck strap to play these like a guitar. Then we have a very similar looking Kawai model. It's the Miyakodori or KT65EB. There was clearly some outsourcing from one company or the other because this is essentially the identical twin of the Lyrish model in weight, size, keys, and design. With that said, this is easily one of my favorite Taisho Koto that I've ever played. It feels extremely smooth to play, the key weighting and key height are perfect, this is a no exaggeration keeper for me. I could say the same generally about the Lyrish model, obviously. Next up we have the Kohaku base model. This one is 96 by 17 by 7.7 centimeters, but only weighs 5.3 pounds. In addition, this one also has the open string note of 5, but has 27 keys, thus goes to a high 6 sharp. Generally, I found the Kohaku keys were very stiff. They have some nice key guides, but when I'm playing fast, I hit some keys a little sideways. This isn't good form as you want to hit straight down, but sometimes you can't help it. On the Kohaku, this creates some drag in the key and I end up flubbing more notes or not pressing down hard enough. It feels great when you're playing slow, but it really fights as I up the tempo. This isn't a thing with all key guides, but definitely on the Kohaku. Sticking with Suzuki, we have the bass run. This one is 102 by 16 by 9 centimeters, and we get back up to a beefy 7.5 pounds. This one has 24 keys again and an open string note of 5. It plays very nice. I like the bigger keys on the left side, but they have some heft and friction to them, which does tire your pinky out of it. It's not a huge complaint, and I would still recommend this one. The Kawai and Lyrish are S plus devices to me, but the Ron is still an A. Then of course the Ron is extremely common, and the other two are extremely rare. Next up we have two Kindenryu models. These are both good devices, though their tone are very different from one another. No one can say which is better or worse, and they both play very well, so I leave most of the comparison to your ears. The first of the two is the Kindenryu Matsukaze base model. This one is 96 centimeters long and 6 pounds. This one's a little different in that it has 24 keys and the open string note is a 2. This may force some transposition or different tuning than you're used to. Then we have the Kindenryu no Bara, which is 86 by 13.5 centimeters and 4.5 pounds. Yet again, this has 24 notes with an open string of 2. It's the same as the other Kindenryu model. The last model is the Zenon bass. This model is special in that it's one of very few bass models that's acoustic and electric. Most of the bass models are solid body electric, but a couple have a hollow body. Of those with the hollow body, they all seem to be rather rare as well. This one is 98 by 13.5 by 5 centimeters and weighs 4.6 pounds. It has 26 keys with an open string note of 5 and goes up to a high 6. The Zenon generally feels pretty good to play, and I will say don't judge a book by its covers. The keys look a little less elegant in their simple flat design, but I prefer that flat design to the slightly domed keys of something like the Kinden Nyu Nobara. The slate dome can sometimes catch your finger when sliding across notes. So then, given the interesting acoustic-electric combo, I know there may be some of the same questions that people ask about acoustic-electric bass guitars. A lot of people wonder if the acoustic cavity changes the sound of the pickups when plugged in. There are many, many, many comments, threads, and battles around this that I don't wish to fight, so instead I leave it to you. I've done a quick demo comparing tone and resonance of electric versus acoustic electric to let you draw your own conclusions. These are long tones to really let it ring out so that you can hear it for yourself. Thank you. 
So the comparisons of electric versus acoustic electric aside, the tone of the Xenon bass is good. It feels a little muted though. You can hear in the long tone demo that it sounds full and rich, but I believe this is because you're hyper focused on one note and listening to the overtones intently. In the later song demos, the harmonics are lacking, which makes it sound a little weak. Compare this to the Kinden Liu Nobara and it's night and day. With this said, when recording, you really may not want a huge spread across the spectrum. You sometimes want the instrument to stick in its pocket and carve out a smaller range. The Xenon feels more like a studio instrument, whereas the Nobara feels like it's for a live performance. This is often how I feel about these. Usually there's not bad instruments, you just have to guess what the designer's intent was for its use. To get a little preachy for a second, in the modern day people really like to sell you on, oh you need this one thing for this thing, and you need this other thing for this other thing, and everything has to have a purpose. In truth, I could EQ the Nobara down to a central frequency, or I could fatten up the Xenon so it's more a personal preference thing honestly. A lot of times this is more about playability to me, which is why I call it out before giving you the sound demos. So then, with the main models of the day out of the way, I wanted to give a quick pause to mention some other models which I won't be demoing. They are, however, interesting in their own right. First we have the Forest Sound, the FS-T base model. This is interesting in that it's a base model that has the keyboard style layout. This one is very rare and when it pops up, it's also super expensive. Next we have the Yamaha SHB30 from the Violier line. This is a base model meant to be used with a bow. You can of course use it like any other Taisho Kodo, but its design for bow sets it apart. And then finally we have the Zenon Harmonia base model. I wanted to point this out because some of the models can be deceiving. I've seen some models that look exactly the same that say Alto on them that get sold as base in their listing, or ones with no marking for the acoustic type. Just because it looks similar does not mean it's a bass. Some basses have two strings, some one, some altos have two strings as well. If you want a bass, make sure it's a bass. Either look for the markings on the instrument, look for documentation, or check that the pegs are bass tight for holding thick strings. And then all this aside, let's look at some demos of all the basses. <laughs>